good day friends it is me hl mod tech and i'm in the mood to make an epic playground so let's get cracking friends step one of course you need to visit tinkercad if you've never been here before make sure you choose sign in with google once you're in we want to create new design friends the first step of this awesome project is to name it we're going to type playground and i'm going to put mdh and i'm going to put a four because i've made this once or twice the next thing we're going to do is change the size I want this to be an awesome playground, so I'm going to make it much bigger. I want to backspace over the two, and I want to make it 400, backspace over the two, and make it 400, and then hit update grid. So we've got this awesome area for our playground. The first ride we're going to add is an awesome slide. To do it, we're going to go down to shape generators. On shape generators, there is an amazing spring. Friends, I want you to bring this spiral out. And I want you to hold the shift key. Make sure you're using one hand for the shift key. And then stretch the up to Crazyville. But then we want to type the number 80. So we're all building with the same size slide. Now I'm going to make this one yellow. And then I'm going to do Control D or Duplicate. Take your pick. Then do Control Up Arrow. One, two. And then I want you to switch that to a hole. So we've got the yellow piece underneath. We've got the hole on top. When you take those two, my friends, you can group them and you have just created an amazing spiral slide. That's how cool and fun this project starts out. Now, friends, we need to add some supports. We're going to do it with this amazing tube. I want you to pick a pipe shape of a hexagon just because it's kind of cool. I want you to set the size for five and press enter. I want the wall thickness to be 2.5 and press enter. When you take a look at this, you can see that would be something that could hold up a slide. Now this next part's a little tricky. Look at it from an angle and I want you to stand it up 90 degrees. Now there's a blue circle here on the inside of this. I kept my mouse inside that circle so it was easier to snap it where I want it. If you go outside, it goes one degree at a time, but you need it standing up just like that. Then I want you to take the lead in, and I want you to make it 35 and press enter. You'll see that it gets much longer with the post down below. Hit D to drop, and this, I hope you can see, my friends, is a pretty decent post for holding up our slide. Move it underneath, make sure it's not poking out. Notice it is too far on the lead out, so we're gonna change that to 10 and press enter. That is a pretty slick solution. Let's do control D, use the arrow keys to nudge it across, and then we're gonna do that rotate again. Look at it from a corner, find this rotation. Notice I'm staying inside the circle, and I wanna rotate it 90 degrees so that it's right here for this side. I'm gonna use my arrow keys to nudge it back and we need to adjust that lead in length again. This time let's try 45 and press enter. It'll be below zero, but we can fix that super quick with a D for drop. Notice if you look at it from the top, there's a bump which would not be acceptable. That would hurt when you slid. Let's just change it to 44 and press enter. Notice you will have to hit D to drop it back down and now it works like a champ. Friends, you have just made a wicked cool spiral slide in just a few minutes. Now, we are going to use code blocks to make an awesome spiral staircase. Of course, since it's in code blocks, let's click code blocks, click create new code block, and then make a brand new design. As we've learned before, we're going to name it. I'm going to name it stairs. Click to make it permanent, switch to modify, and we are going to create a new object called a single stair. Rename variable type stair. Tell it okay. To make this show up on your screen, I'm going to hit plus and use the slider to move up so we can see it a little better. Let's go to shapes and we are going to add a box. Bring out its parameters and I'm going to tell you the numbers I want you to use. 20, make this one 5, and make this one 2. The first stair is always up in the air, so let's move this on Z. And I'm going to tell you that a good number to use is 5. If we hit play, you can see we've got an adorable little stair. 
I'm gonna make it a brown color just because that's how I want my stairs to look. We're gonna add a post for a rail as well. Go back to your shapes, bring out a cylinder, open its parameters, and I want you to simply change this to one, and I want the height to be 15. We are going to use a move to nudge it out towards the edge of the post. When you bring in your move, we want to put the numbers 8 and 13. Let's zoom in a couple clicks out here, orbit so we can see, and when you hit play, check it out, we've got one sweet little stare. I am going to make this a brown color. I'm going to do a mixed color because I think it looks a little bit more interesting. We're going to make our staircase adjustable, so let's quickly add three variables. Switch to math and choose create variable and set it up top. And we need to rename that variable to height. And then make sure you always drag a new one out. Never duplicate these because it doesn't work. And we're going to rename the second variable to turn. This will be how much it rotates each time. And then we're going to make a third variable. I emphasize again, bring out another one. And we're going to rename this little guy as nudge. We're going to fill these with the number 3, 22.5, and 1. Let's move to the modify commands and create the new object we're going to call staircase. When I rename it, I'm just going to do SC because that's a lot faster to type. We are going to use the count with command and we're going to change it to 20. So there will be 20 stairs on our staircase. We're going to bring in the add a copy of a stair and we get that from the data drop your stair in the block and then we're gonna find a move command in the modify and we're gonna fill it with those data pieces so we're gonna nudge it for X we're gonna nudge it for Y notice when you bring this down you use the left edge to drop it in and then the height is gonna be here so I just want to show you if you move underneath you can see they light up when you're in the right spot now we need to rotate it, so let's move back to modify, bring out that little rotate command, make sure you change it to rotating around Z, because we want to twist around the Z axis. So we need to adjust the pivot because the stairs are going around the left edge. So let's move back to the math and put that axis number out here, and the left edge is negative 10. So put a negative 10 in here. And now we need to make the variables grow after each turn by putting a change item, including the turn number. And then remember we were using 22.5. And then we need to bring out another change item and we need to make the height grow. And we are gonna make the height grow. And I'm gonna tell you I want the height to be five apart. Alrighty friends, so it's time for the moment of truth. Watch this, when you hit play, you have got an awesome spiral staircase. All right, friends, time for the moment of truth. Let's click play and bam, you have almost immediately got a sweet set of spiral stairs. Friends, now I got a way we can add a rail. All right, friends, so the first thing I wanna do is break this apart and I'm gonna throw out this move. I'm gonna build from the ground level for this version. Because of that change, I'm gonna change this to eight as well. So you can see I subtracted five. Now we're gonna add a rail and I'm gonna make a rail with another box. Let's open up its parameters. And I want you to type two, 11, and two for the sizes. I do want it to have two for the edge and I wanna have 10 edge steps to round it. I'm gonna make mine the dark brown so that way it'll kind of have a cool contrast. And then we need to bring in a move to get that rail where we want it. I did a lot of trial and error, and my favorite numbers were 7.5, 3, and 17. Real quickly, I'm gonna hit play and let you see how it looks now. So you can see that is in the right starting spot 
but it sticks out at the wrong angles. So let me show you how we fix that. We are going to bring out a rotate around. And we want to rotate around X. And I'm going to tell you that the number we're going to use is 22 degrees. You can play with these and find better ones. I'm going to duplicate this. And for the second time, we're going to rotate around Z. And I'm going to tell you that my favorite number here was 10. Once again, you can play with these as much as you want. I'm going to leave the pivot blank. And let's hit play and see what we made. All right, so there you can see the spiral staircases come together, but I've got the height wrong. Let me show you how to fix that. My first adjustment I'm going to do is match this height of the next stair to 3 and 3. Let's see how that looks. Uh, right there, those already connected a lot better than they did before. And now I want to add a center post. So let's create a new object. Of course, we need to rename it. And I'm going to call this one post. And we're going to simply make it with a cylinder. So let's go back to our shapes, bring out the cylinder, open up its properties. I'm going to set it to one of the browns so it has a cool contrast. I would like the radius to be 4. And then I have found that the height I like is 90. I'm going to leave the sides at 20 but I do want the bevel to be two. Now we just need to move this into place. Let's go to modify and move. And because it is 90 high, we need to raise it up 45. And then also to get it to the right place in our stairs, we need to do negative 10 for the X. Alrighty friends, there you have it. An amazing staircase that now you can export as a shape and then use in the rest of your Tinkercad projects. I'm going to name mine Spiral Staircase or Spiral Stairs. Never lock the part size and save the shape so that it's available in normal Tinkercad. You can simply at this point click back on your Tinkercad button and then we are going to load our 3D designs and we're going to return or choose Tinker This on our original playground slide. Once you're in, we need to switch to our creations. If you wait patiently, there is your spiral slide. When you click, you can bring it out and check it out. They fit almost perfectly. Well, here's how we're gonna fix this so they do fit perfectly. I want you to take the work plane and I want you to connect it this edge of your slide. Return to basic shapes and we wanna bring out a cube that's gonna be the platform that people can stand on. So stretch it so that it's the right height. Make it so there's a little bit of room for them to move. Notice whenever I nudge these, I always use the black handle and I stretch them out so now there's a lot of room for people to be on my spiral slide. At this point, once we've got this positioned, we're gonna hit work plane and put it back on the ground. Click on our spiral slide, hold shift and stretch it till it's the same height. Notice if I bring the black handle out, that way we can see where it overlap. Once again, I'm going to click on this, hold shift, and I'm going to shrink it till it lines up just about perfectly. I'm going to make this platform a little larger, and then we also need to make it safer. Friends, we are going to add posts so that people don't fall off, and I'm also going to show you a sweet duplicate trick. Let's press F to zoom in. Let's put the work plane on the top of our platform, bring out a cube, Hold down shift, stretch it to any number, and I'm going to tell you to type 2 and press enter. This is going to be the post. Let's raise it up. I think a good number is probably 25. And then I want you to move it over to this corner. And you can even select the two of them. Choose a line, make the red one the boss. And we want to go to that edge. And we want to go to this edge. Notice I right click dragged so that we can see that. I'm going to make this brown. I'm going to make this brown so that it all matches. I think I'm going to go with this lighter brown just to stay with my pattern. And now I'm going to do Control D. Let go of the keyboard and mouse. Use the arrow keys to nudge over. And then when I let go and do Control D again and again and again, it goes almost all the way across perfectly. I'm going to make it perfect. And this is one of my favorite tricks by stretching the floor to make it the size I want. 
Now I'm going to click on this single piece. So notice I'm switching pieces, doing Control D. Here's my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Control D, 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 D. This one almost lined up perfect. Friends, I'm going to fix it by just doing this. Now you can do different amounts of nudge, but you can see the technique. We click on the last one. We do Control D. I'm going to do my seven nudges and then Control D again and again and again to make a safe place for the kids to play. I'm going to do Control D one more time. And then this one, I'm going to nudge over by hand so it protects that corner. We need to put a rail on top of this. I'm going to do it like this. If I do Control D and I put the work plane up on this spot, now when I hit D, that'll drop all the way up there. If I rotate it 90 degrees, notice I'm staying inside the blue circle. I can now hit D to drop. And then I'm just going to use the arrow keys to line it up. And I'm going to make it the dark brown so it looks cool. If we go over to the black handle, it's super easy to stretch it out. I'm going to click on that cool shape. Notice I'm switching shapes so I don't have anything memorized. I'm going to do Control D and move it all the way across. That'll fit perfect because they're the same on both sides. And then I'll do Control D. Notice this one moved to Wackadoodleville. I'm going to just move it back and then do 90 degrees and nudge it out till it's perfect. Once again, we can use the awesome little stretch command to get them out so that they match. Friends, that is a nice safe place for the kids to ride. You do need to delete this one so that they can actually get on the slide. Friends, let's take our slide and make it accessible to everyone by adding a sweet elevator. Check out this technique. If we go down to shape generators, there is an amazing item called a soft box. When you bring it out, I'm going to tell you the numbers we want are 30, 30, and I'm going to tell you 120 for the height. So it's nice and tall. This is going to be the outside case of the elevator. We are going to put a top on this elevator really quick. Check this out. Put the work plane on the edge. Do control D. Hit D to push that all the way up there. We're going to instead of 120, make it two. So boom, it's on top and lined up. And then if we take the wall and change it to 15 and press enter, it fills it in just like that. We're going to hit group and boom, we have got our elevator shaft. Friends, we have got our elevator shaft. It's time to build the elevator. Once again, soft box. This time, 24 press enter, 24 press enter, and 30 press enter. I'm going to make it blue so it's a different color. I want you to put the work plane on top. I want you to do control D and drop. So we've got a second one right on top, just like a moment ago. We're going to click on its height and we're going to make it two so it is roof size. Then I want you to take the wall and make it 12 so it fills in after you press enter. Let's hit the work plane and put it back on the ground. Select those two, make sure they're aligned. As you can see, they're perfect. So let's group them. Friends, now it's time to cut out the openings. We're going to do that with basic shapes. Let's bring out a cube and let's make it the same size as our other one. If we just come over here and do 24 and press enter and we do 30 and press enter, it will be the exact same size. Oh, I forgot the two. So let's do 32 because we did add that up top. Now we can take this piece and select those two. Notice that's all I'm touching. If we do a line and make the yellow one the boss, there is the center and that's going to cut out perfect. I want to cut it out up here as well. Let's put the work plane on this edge. Do control D and then do drop and it drops to the exact right spot. Now friends, it's time to group them. The easiest way is to click on the hole, hold down shift and click on the yellow piece and then click on the other hole. When you've got all three shapes, you can group and boom, your elevator has the openings it needs. Let's put the work plane back on the ground select those two pieces and let's do a line and we want the yellow one to be the boss and boom we want that there and there and friends if you want to see your elevator kind of work check this out if you hold control and do up you can see it rise 
and there would be a place right there where people could get out. If you hit the letter D, it drops back to the bottom. We want to make sure it's safe, so let's hit delete and give them that opening. Let's also take our rail and find the black handle in the middle. This is the important thing. I'm going to do F to fit view and let's stretch it back so there's a safe entry. How cool is that? Friends, that is a pretty awesome slide and it's the start of an amazing playground. Make sure you keep an eye out for the extra lessons. We're going to make many more things as you make the most incredible playground ever. Friends, remember if you ever make something awesome and you want to share it with me, you can click this button right here, generate a link, copy the link, and you can reach out and share it with me. I am HL Mod Tech on Facebook, Instagram, and Gmail. You can also find me on Twitter. I am HL Tinkercad. If those options don't work for you don't forget you can also visit hlmodtech.com i have my own website with all kinds of lessons about tinkercad i also have a sweet built-in messaging tool you can click on this fill in your information hit send and reach me almost instantly finally friends i hope you had a ton of fun with this and if you did please give it a like please also hit that share button so more people can learn about hl mod tech of course if you got a question comment or suggestion add it down below and if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button and last but not least hit that notification bell you're going to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me hl mod tech thanks for watching have a great day